Hello Booktube, uh, today is going to be the second part in my review of City by Clifford D. Simak which I'm reading as a part of a read-along being organised by uh, Shawnee Stanfast. Uh, this week I read the third ta tale census and the fourth tale uh, desertion which um, Sean uh, has said, uh, told me was actually the decision was actually the first story written, but I don't think it was the first one published. Though I may be wrong. Again, um, Sean, if you're watching this, if I do get anything wrong, please uh, leave a comment and I'll I'll pin it so that people can see the corrections of anything I get incorrect or, I, uh, miss, or if I misspeak. Um, so, um, census uh, takes place on Earth, and it takes place. As the previous two stories have, um, in the area where the Websters are living, the Websters are the sort of uh, the f are a family who appear throughout the um, book. Um, the story follows Grant. Uh, let me make sure that, that is his name. It is, I think it is Grant. Yeah, Grant. Um, he is um, Richard Grant. Sorry, that's his one. He is. Um, uh, he's. Taking, he's one of the people who's all, who's uh, sort of getting the all the information for a census because the idea is this is about th uh, the the last census was taken three hundred years um, before the time that the novel set. I think this is set about what, eighty odd years, fifty to eighty odd years after the uh, after Huddling Place, which is the second tale, um, and by that, by this point. Most of the world's population has gone off to the other planets, to Mars and um, other places, um, to other uh, planets that have been colonised. And the only people who remained are people who didn't want to take part in modern civilization. They're living out in rural areas. Or, um, they have farms. They're uh, farming the traditional way, not with their hydroponics. Hydropo hydroponics, I should say. And they are hunting and pretty living a sort of um, backwards um, life. And so the World Committee, which sort of runs the world at this point, uh, wants to um, do a census to find out who's there. And also, uh, they've not started noticing that mutate, uh, mutants have started to appear. And so they're looking for uh, to find out mutants, and um, in particular, <coughs> in the uh, second tale, there's a Martian Juan, who is a friend of the of Jerome Webster, who's the main character there. And he, um, is he is about to make a breakthrough uh, on a philosophical point, which would change the way people think. Uh, and then he becomes ill with a brain, with some issue with his brain, and that's what Jerome um, Webster has to deal with. Um, I won't spoil the end of that, so I won't. I try. I'm going to try, and I'm not going to be able to give a full account of, the, of this story of um, of census because I don't want to spoil that. But. Uh, Grant is also looking for uh, has has an interest in Joanne and he's looking for somebody a mutant who does not think the way that other people think and therefore can sort of continue Joanne's uh, work and finish it. Um, he so he's going around the census. He he goes to the area. He's in the area where the Websters are, and he meets a, a talking dog because um. The Websters who we meet in the book are Thomas Webster, who was the son of Jerome Webster in the last story, and then and then Thomas's grandson. Let me just try to find his name. So I should have thought of written this down really. Uh, Bruce Webster. And Bruce is sort of um, working on dogs, giving them the ability to speak, and he's done quite a few of them. And the one in, the one we meet in the novel is called uh, Nathaniel. And uh, he and because when Nathaniel meets meets Grant, Grant he takes Grant back to the Webster's um, house, and he he meets Thomas and meets um, Bruce, and in a conversation with Thomas, uh, Grant learns about a man who um, helped Thomas with a uh, the problem he had with the ship. He was uh, Thomas, unlike his father, who was a unlike his father, who was a, a surgeon. Thomas was an engineer. And he was building a rocket ship for his son to uh, to travel farther out in space. In fact, during the story, Thomas's son is uh, at that point on a mission traveling beyond Jupiter. Uh, sorry, beyond Pluto, I think it is. And he's going further than any man has ever traveled before in space. But when the ship he's on, 
Thomas built, and Thomas was during the build and he'd had difficulty. He had a problem, he couldn't see how, where he'd gone wrong. And then all of a sudden, one day, whilst he's sort of looking over this, a man comes out, uh, sort of a, a, a man who is one of these people who seem to have stayed on Earth because he didn't like um, the way he uh, didn't want to take part in modern civilization. Uh, comes out out of nowhere, looks at the plans, says, that's the problem, and then, ultimate, or, or, then almost immediately leaves. And Thomas looks at what the man has said, and it turns out he's, the man's right. And so, um, this sort of, this sort of, um, <coughs> this sort of sparks something for Grant. And as he sort of travels a bit further, he finds out that this bloke, who we, we do eventually meet, called Joe, what, not only has, do, has been doing this quite a lot, he's been um, he he's been helping other people with other things. For example, at one point he actually helps Grant because Grant has got this uh, atomic gun, which he can use as a firelighter, sort of all-purpose weapon as sort of, and tool. So he uses it as in the book. He, when we when we when we see Grant with it, he's trying to start a fire, but it's not working. And then Joe appears, does something to it, and then it immediately starts working, and Joe disappears. And whilst talking to uh, a local called Baxter, he discovers that Joe is quite old. And we eventually do learn from Joe how old he is. I think he's 160 odd years old. But he doesn't look older than an adolescent, apparently. Or he's, or he's in his adolescence, uh, Joe claims. Whilst being 160 odd years old. Um, and so, we're, so Grant sort of approaches. Um, uh, Joe about the idea of Juan's um, uh, continuing Juan's work, Juan's work, and sort of the story ends with Grant sort of having a conversation with Joe and then dealing with the, the sort of immediate aftermath of Joe and um, Grant seeing uh, telling Nathaniel he's got to remember something and pass it on to the other dogs. I won't expand into that just because I don't want again, I'm, I'm going to try and make this spoiler free. And then, <coughs> Desertion, he sit on um, Jupiter. I think set on, on, he doesn't actually say how long after um, Census uh, Desertion takes place. But anyway, they're on Jupiter and you're following a man called Fowler. Uh, because there's a there's a there's, Jupiter has not be, yet been fully colonized because of the sort of the invite the, the, the Jupiter's environment is deeply hostile to uh, man, and so he's part of a survey team trying to come up with ways to how to colonize um, Jupiter and one of, and because of the sort of net, because of the atmosphere and all the sort of hostile environment uh, both the the, the, the gravity. And the fact that there is acid rain and all sorts of horrible things that sort of human beings cannot survive in uh, the to do this exploration, you have to uh, the person has to be co uh, converted into a life form that can survive this. And there's a uh, there's a life form life form on um, on Jupiter which is called I think Lopers. I believe the phrase. Let me just make sure I get that right. Uh, yeah, Loper, yeah, which are um, which have evolved on the planet and they have sort of equal to human intelligence, and so they get converted. And in and during the story, as the beginning of the story, Fowler has sent out uh, th uh, three men at that point, and they haven't come back. Sorry, should, sorry about this. I should have just made sure of this. You know, four men out, and then uh, in the and. Then he sends out a fifth man. Those four men haven't come back, and then they send out a fifth man. And Fowler's finding this very difficult because effectively he knows he's having to send men out. He's got to send men out to try and find out what if there's anything that can be done. If there's stuff that, how to sort of make Jupiter livable for man. But every man he sends out has died, and he knows everybody else regards him as killing them. And so he decides to go out with his dog Tailzer to do the mission himself and find out. And so they get converted into lopers and they go out into um, Jupiter. And then they discover 
what happened to the risk of and why the men never came back. I won't explain any more, but just say it's it, that's pretty much that story. Now, I enjoyed both these stories. Sean did say that uh, that that, that the, the um, first story was a bit out. Of, the, the, the first story is important to sort of base things, but it seems a bit out of a bit um, a set, uh, different from the other two, from the other stories in this in this in the, the novel. And I would agree, but I feel I don't know if I'm going to feel this after I've read a bit further, but I feel that desertion seems a bit. Uh, out of a step with the other one, partly because of course there's no Webster in there, and what should you have talking dogs? It seems a bit, um, uh, as I say, out of step with the others. And I don't, other than the uh, other than the just, other than Towser is a talking dog, uh, though he doesn't talk very well in the uh, when he's in his dog form. The link to the previous stories isn't apparent. However, obviously, I've only I've only read the first four stories. This is the fourth story, and there's obviously uh, five more to go. So, almost certainly, there'll be an interlink. But at this point, it did seem it seems a bit compared to the rest, the previous three, a bit disjointed from them. However, I did enjoy that story, and I did enjoy sort of what happens to. Um, to Fowler and Townsend when they become when they go become locals and they're out in Jupiter itself. Um, I won't I can't go into too much of that because that was spoiler, it, but it's it, that's interesting. And I liked and Fowler's Fowler seemed very human and a real person. There is a character in there called Miss Stanley. I'll just make sure I've got that correct. So let's make sure uh, Yeah. Who were uh, sort of um, expresses the, the sort of idea that Fowler is um, sending his men off to his death, and she's. I'm not sure if uh, Simak meant her to be unpleasant, but she did come across as being unpleasant, and I've met people like her in real life, and so I didn't much like her very much. She accuses uh, Fowler of being. Uh, Fowler's, Fowler's uh, motivations of being selfish and promoted by am ambition, but I didn't get that at all. That Fowler in, in the story came across as a man who was generally trying to do it because he wanted to make Jupiter livable for man and that people could live there. That he was, that uh, he was very committed to the cause of, um, of human colonization of Jupiter, not. For his personal ambition, and so, I, and so that is was enjoyable. That really did humanise uh, Fowler quite a lot. Um, in census, I enjoyed that. I, I liked the. I was a bit confused initially um, by the by Thomas because I think it, it must have been because I wasn't. I I I, I, <coughs> I was interrupted when I was reading um, census, so I, this confusion might might be down to that, but. I mis I mistook um, Thomas for Jerome Webster, so I thought it was Jerome, sort of thirty years on after his, um, after thirty or forty years after um, um, Hudling Place. But obviously, I was wrong. It was it's. Um, I think Thomas must be in his eighties um, or nineties when the book's taking place. So. So it's almost sort of 60, 70 years after that, 80 years, I think, uh, that could be. But, I, but Thomas came over quite well, quite good as a character. Um, Grant was interesting, the fact that he's looking for mutants and he's honest with people what he's doing. And he does understand that people are going to be suspicious of him. And so he sort of comes across a very honest and um, open character who's genuinely interested in... Uh, people, the people who's uh, um, uh, sort of head counting, and um, then he has a real, he got real, and the, the, he really does is interested in trying completing Joanne's work. Uh, Joe, the character of Joe, who's the mutant, seemed a bit. He, he seemed a bit like a cardboard cutout, more than a, another cipher in a way. Than 
a real character. Unlike, for example, Baxter, who, uh, who was an old man whose father told him that his grandfather was helped by Joe. Um, and he came across as, again, a real person, very real. You can imagine him living in uh, an American, running farm in some American uh, backcountry quite easily. Oh, and um, Jenkins, the Webster's Fang robot. So, robot butler appears uh, in the novel again, appears in the story as well. Overall, I enjoyed these two stories. I've enjoyed, I've got to say, of the two, I found Desertion more interesting even though it was even though obviously at this point it seems a bit disjointed from the other ones but a, a census was good as well um i particularly like sort of the <coughs> the descriptions of the the fact that the people who remained on earth were living their lives in sort of traditional manner and it, that sort of very very much continues the um the uh, a theme can you sort of something that's started in the first story about the far, these sort of uh, dispossessed farmers setting themselves up in the um, in the super in the sort of abandoned houses of the city in um, the first uh, tale? So overall, I enjoyed it, and I'm I'm really enjoying the story. I'm looking forward to where things will go in the next two stories. Um, so um, with that, I will say. Uh, goodbye, Bob Duke, and I'll see you next week.